Katrina. You watching Dante's Boxing Nation. Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on guys? So some really, really great news. According to reports, according to ESPN reports, PBC's Al Heyman is offering Canelo Alvarez a big one fight deal to fight Jamal Charlo. In Matchroom's Eddie Hearn, they are offering Canelo a two fight deal to fight Bivol and Gennady Golovkin. This is not great news because it means Canelo is gonna definitely take one of these tough fights. It's great news because the only offers on the table are really, really tough fights for Canelo Alvarez. These are real fights. These are competitive fights. No Caleb Smiths, no Saunders, no Plants, no Yildirims. All of those options will put Canelo Alvarez in a real fight, something we haven't seen in almost four years. You always hear fans talking about how much money Canelo is making and et cetera, et cetera. But the truth is, if he fights against Jamal Charlo, it will be the biggest payday of his career. We know this because the biggest payday of his career right now was against Caleb Plant. Caleb Plant, a heavy underdog, someone that a lot of people didn't really know, didn't have the skill, the buzz, or the resume of a Jamal Charlo. And Al Heyman, he got both Canelo and Caleb Plant their biggest paydays of their career. Now, when it comes to the two-fight deal by Matchroom, Bivol and Gennady Golovkin, that's an interesting offer because before, when Canelo Alvarez got out of his contract with DAZN and became a free agent, he was still working with DAZN. They gave him a two-fight deal back then. But the two-fight deal, it included Caleb Smith and Avni Yildirim, which is so ironic because Avni Yildirim is the whole reason why Canelo Alvarez broke out of the contract in the first place. Because, of course, Canelo, as always, is looking for the easiest fight. So he wanted to fight Abney Yildirim and get paid the 30 plus million dollars. And the zone, they didn't approve the fight because they understood that that was a waste of money. It was a cherry pick and they weren't going to make any of their money back in that investment. So Canelo, he said, well, if I can't take the Yildirim fight, I want out of the contract. They settled and they allowed this man to walk away from the zone contract just to turn around and give him a two-fight deal that included Yildirim. So my point is, before, the zone gave this man a two-fight deal with two easy fights. Now they're giving him a two-fight deal with two dangerous fights. Bevel and Gennady Golovkin. Now I know, of course, people are going to say, well, Golovkin is the easier fight. I mean, he's older. He's almost 40 years old right now. But you can't forget Gennady Golovkin arguably beat Canelo Alvarez twice. His inactivity, it could work both ways. It could give him time to rest and he could come back looking good because he's not fighting a lot. There's not a whole lot of wear and tear. He's not in a whole lot of wars. So it's a possibility the time off could have preserved his body's constitution. And he can come out looking just as fresh as he did in the second fight. We'll see. Gennady Golovkin has always had a great jab. And whenever you got a great jab along with power, that's always going to be a problem for a fighter like Canelo Alvarez. From the Floyd Mayweather fight to the Caleb Plant fight, you can see that Canelo Alvarez, he still has the same problems with the same punches. He still gets hit with the same punches consistently. And here's a clip of Canelo getting hit with the same jab and right hand in the Kovalev fight. So while there's no doubt that Golovkin on paper is an easier fight than a Bivol fight, it's still a much better fight, much more competitive fight than any of the guys that Canelo has been facing in years. Now let's talk about Bivol. Now guys, Bivol is the only fighter right now, well two fighters, 
There are two fighters right now I believe beats Canelo hands down. It's Bivol and it's Andrade. Those two fighters I believe beats Canelo hands down. I believe the Charlo fight is a 50-50 fight, but going back to Bivol, Bivol is everything that Canelo struggles against. Foot movement, counterpunching ability, and a great jab. Not to mention the power and the size of a natural light heavyweight, which is really gonna make the big difference. It's equivalent to fighters like Roman Gonzalez, Chocolatito. When he was at the smaller weight classes, he was getting outboxed by a lot of guys, but he always had the power to bail him out. Same thing with Nonito Donaire. When he was at the smaller weight classes, his power would always bail him out. He would be getting outboxed by the majority of his opponents. He would be down on the scorecards in more than half of his fights. And the power would come and save the day. But when fighters like Nonito Donaire, when they moved up to a weight class where the opponents had either the same amount of power or more power, their power wasn't enough anymore. I'm talking about Nonito and Roman Gonzalez. They had to rely on their skill set and their defense, which is why it is so difficult to do what Floyd Mayweather did. By way of contrast, Floyd had to move up five weight classes and almost every single opponent that Floyd Mayweather faced at the welterweight division had way more power than Floyd Mayweather and was a good 10 to 20 pounds bigger than him. So Floyd was used to doing that. He was used to figuring out other ways to beat someone who has a massive size and power advantage over them. Canelo's not used to that. The majority of Canelo's opponents did not have power. The last opponent he had that had power and really used it was Gennady Golovkin, and a lot of people feel Golovkin won that fight. That's why Canelo moving up to 175 is going to be really interesting because he does have fighters in this division that can match his power. This is the reason why Canelo Alvarez did not fight David Benavidez at 168, but he fought all of the European and white champions because none of them have power. On top of that, they were all coming off of their worst performances. See, Canelo, he has the same mentality that a Diego Corrales used to have. I remember Diego Corrales... He used to say this before his fights when he was undefeated, and he said it before the Floyd Mayweather fight. He said, oh, he's going to win the first three, four rounds. I'm going to give him those. He's going to win those rounds, and then I'm going to catch up with him. And then I'm going to start walking him down, and I'm going to knock him out, right? This is somewhat of Canelo's thinking. I'm not saying Canelo goes in there thinking about throwing the rounds away, but he feels, I don't care how skilled this guy is. He has no power. Eventually, I'm going to catch him and I'm going to knock him out because these are the type of opponents that Canelo has been in the ring with. Canelo felt the same way in the Floyd Mayweather fight. Canelo Alvarez rehydrates to like 185 pounds. Floyd Mayweather admitted, and it was on the All Access, he admitted the day of the fight, he was weighing 146 pounds. Canelo was nearly 20 pounds bigger than Floyd Mayweather. The night of the fight. So Canelo Alvarez was looking at this like he was a super middleweight fighting a welterweight. And he was like, there's no way. I don't care how skilled this guy is. He can be more skilled than me. There's no way I'm letting the guy two divisions or three whatever smaller than me beat me. No matter how skilled he is. But Floyd Mayweather, he always said, you can be bigger than me, faster than me, stronger than me. It doesn't matter because I'm going to be smarter than you. Brains versus Braun. So Canelo is used to taking advantage of the average fighter who has no power when Canelo has all the power. But it's not that easy to do it when someone can match your power. And that's the reason why we seldomly see Canelo in the ring with guys that can match his power. But the walls are closing in now, guys. The walls are really closing in because as you see, the only offers that Canelo is getting are tough fights. He didn't get a Macabu offer. Nobody is talking about, man, we want you to fight Macabu and we got this amount of money, right? There's a very good chance that Canelo Alvarez may still fight against Macabu and continue to destroy his reputation. While you have other fighters in boxing today actually looking to fight the best. 
while you have Devin Haney. Once again, people use this word pick and choose. Oh, Canelo can pick and choose. He can pick and choose whoever he wants. Well, if Canelo Alvarez can pick and choose, that means he could pick the best opponents available and really make his resume look impressive. Or he can continue to do what he's doing right now, which is pick the weakest opposition available. When you have networks and you have promoters that are offering you the most money you've ever made to fight against the best opponents in fights that real boxing fans want. We're not talking about the race fans. The race fans, they just want to see Canelo take the easiest fights just to say, oh man, thank God we know that he's not going to lose again because that's how they feel when they look at the Macaboo fight. When they see the Macaboo fight, they're like, you know, wiping the sweat away like, oh, what a relief. Because I was worried that Canelo Alvarez was going to take one of those real competitive tough fights, which wouldn't be a guaranteed win for him. So even Canelo Alvarez's own fans, they don't have confidence in him that he can beat all of these tough opponents. Because if they did, they would be pushing for these fights. You know, I said that in my last video and there were a lot of Canelo fans and they was like, we do want to see Canelo beat Charlo ass and beat this guy's ass and beat that guy's ass. No, that's not saying that you want the fight. You're just telling us that you're going to be rooting and you're going to be praying that Canelo beats them when they fight. If you were truly pushing for the best fights in boxing involving Canelo Alvarez and you really wanted to see him, you would be disappointed when Canelo Alvarez picks the weakest link over and over and over again. For you Canelo Alvarez fans that follow Canelo on Instagram, on his Facebook, on Twitter, you would be on there. You would be telling him, Canelo, man, I'm your biggest fan, man, but we really want to see you fight Charlo, uh, Bivol, uh, David Benavidez, because we believe you can beat these guys and we want you to show the world you're the best. That's how people act, or I should say this is what boxing fans do when they really do have the confidence that their guy can win. But at the end of the day, it's not even about if he can win or not. We just want to see the best fight against the best. That's how every sport is, right? Like I told you guys already, Charlo versus Canelo or Canelo versus Charlo, that's a 50-50 fight. There's a very good chance Canelo can win that fight. But real boxing fans still want to see it because we want to know how good Canelo is, how good Jamal Charlo is. And that's how we find out. You don't get credit for fantasy matches. All you fans in the comment section, Canelo would beat the hell out of Charlo, Andre, David Benavidez, Bivol, he beat them all. You don't get credit for fantasy matches. You actually have to do the work. Ali had to do the work to be called the greatest. Sugar Ray Leonard had to do the work. Oscar De La Hoya had to do the work. Chavez Sr. had to put in the work. And so does Canelo Alvarez. Win, lose, or draw. So Canelo is going to make himself look horrible if he has these big offers by Matchroom, by Al Heyman in the PBC series. He turns down the biggest payday of his life just to fight another cherry pick against Macabu. We know that if Terrence Crawford was in Canelo Alvarez's shoes and Terrence Crawford was a natural super middleweight, he would never be fighting a Macabu. He would have never fought a Yildirim. He would have never fought a Rocky Fielding. He would have already fought David Benavidez. He would have already fought Charlo and all of them. He would move up and he would fight Bivol and fight all of those guys, unify the belts, no problem, if he was a super middleweight in Canelo's shoes. We know this. Even the most racist Canelo Alvarez fan in the world knows this to be true deep down in his heart. And Terrence Crawford would do these things because he is the best fighter in the world. There's no way you can be the best fighter in the world if you yourself don't even have confidence and believe you're the best fighter in the world. So now Canelo Alvarez, he has two big offers on the table. Once again, let's look at the dichotomy. Imagine if this was years ago when all the welterweights, the top welterweights were still undefeated. Keith Thurman, Danny Garcia, Errol Spence. Terrence Crawford comes to the welterweight division, wins his WBO title against Jeff Horn, and just like that, he gets the biggest offer of his career to fight Errol Spence. 
but he gets other offers to fight the undefeated Thurman, Danny Garcia. Do you guys think that Terrence Crawford would turn down all of those offers to go look for a Macabu to fight? Someone we never heard of? At a weight class north, a guy that no one has heard of, a guy who's been knocked out twice and has no type of skill set or chin or defense whatsoever. He just happens to have a belt. Do you guys know how ostracized Terrence Crawford would be? We know what time it is. So hopefully, you know, Canelo Alvarez, he is going to take one of these tough fights. I mean, he's really, really running out of options. He's running out of Maccaboos, Yodirums, and Plants. And it'll be interesting to see what he does next. Even if he takes the Maccaboo fight, it'll be interesting where he goes from there. I don't know where he's going to find another Maccaboo after that. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one. All right, now check this out, guys. If you're looking to repair eczema scars, burns and bruises, dark spots and blemishes, then this right here is the perfect product for you guys. It's called L.O. Key Face and Body Oil. Athletes and top-ranking boxers, they're also using it after training to reduce swelling, inflammation, and to ease the pain. So get yours today. Go to LODeKey.com. Like them on Facebook and follow them on Instagram. My name is Chris and I'm all the way here from Anchorage, Alaska at Scalp Carolinas and I'm here for my second treatment of SMP. Well, I was sitting at home one day and uh, going over my Facebook page and they have different, you know, like advertisements popping up and I saw one for SMP and I saw some pictures of some guys, you know, a before and after and I was looking at that and, I, you know, it caught my attention so I Googled it. SMP, nothing showed up in my area. So, uh, you know, I did a little more research and all of a sudden, Scout Carolinas popped up in the web browser. So I started uh, watching his videos and uh, seeing all the reaction from all the other people. We talked on the phone, we made appointments and everything. I sent him pictures and uh, uh, he looked at them and I was like, can you fix this? And, uh, you know, he pretty much said, no problem. My first session, uh, he made me feel extremely comfortable. Uh, it was almost like I was talking to family. He started and uh, during the whole, whole treatment, we talked and, you know, about our families and our life and, you know, and things that he does and things that I do. I mean, before I know it, the first session was over. When you see someone doing something that they love, uh, as much as I see Enoch Glover love what he does, uh, it shows in his work. I wouldn't point anyone in any other direction but here to North Carolina, Scout Carolinas, to get this done. Let me tell you guys about this company, NWA Connie Corsos. They breed Kani Corso Mastiffs, which is a guardian dog that is treasured for its protective nature and strong loyalty to family. If you're looking for a family-friendly dog that's intelligent, muscular, and brave enough to take on any intruder, then you need a Kani Corso Mastiff. Kani Corsos are extremely versatile, performing well in a variety of activities, such as hunting, agility, competitions, and obedience trials. With its athleticism and versatility as a hunting dog, guard dog, sports dog, and the show dog, the Connie Corso Massive is perfect for any family. They also have standard French Bulldogs with excellent health, structure, temperament, and superior bloodlines with many champions in present day and pedigrees. Visit NWA Connie Corsos on all social media platforms to find the perfect puppy for your home today.